Wolverhampton 530 split stakes picture painter. Quarter point each way, sing the blues 9 to 4 half point. I've got Rainbow Lad third and Boise fourth in the numbers. Picture painter seems half decent for this a jumper, but a repeat of his last one puts him level with sing the blues. With young Patrick Millman who rides very well. For smaller stakes, maybe try sing the blues to be picture painter. Exactor with Rainbow Lad for the trifecta. Six o'clock, real estate, sixteen to one, quarter point. Each way, by Dan Silly. I think that Peter is a surface that suits his style of racing, and coming back here looks to have every chance of going very close to the win. Astonished at the price, to be honest. Sure, welcome an establishment. Can be backed at small each way place. And take this three for the combo exotics. It should play you if correct. <clears throat> Monumental man is the pace angle here and doesn't go down without a fight, so you cannot rule him out totally. But the race looks to have run to suit the tip. When race post or the other media talk about the draw. Maybe it's just instinctive because all the study I've done on the draw is high. It's very much favoured in six furlong handicapped. If you can get away okay and slot in. Drawn low in big fields can sometimes cost you dear. And I do not like one, two, three in big fields. Because when horses are coming back around the last bend, you're stuck on the inside. You have no chance. If there's no room, you just... You've got to stop, you've got to pull your horse back. So that is very dangerous. Now, I watch six furlong races and, you know, if they can get away well and then just slot in, a lot of horses do win from high draws on the six to a mile at Wolves. 6.30, Dynamo Walt. Now, Dynamo Walt was um, up against a real gamble last time at Chelmsford. So even though this is not his track, I feel um, the trainer seems to be in a bit of form um, and he's been winning sending in horses to tracks that they're not really useful you know used to so and I do like Dino Wall I did put him up against that favorite and then just be like 20 minutes before the race realized that uh, you know the the McApple be um, horse you know the um, horse watchers they I obviously realized they had a decent bet on him so I got stuck into it myself you know, and Dynamo Walt, my original tip, he came through to, go to get second, so he is a decent horse. And obviously, the, um, that winner who was sec he was second to was, you know, really in a rude health. So, um, Dynamo Walt here. Uh, I think so something, look, he needs a really fast pace, you know, to show his best. Uh, Primo Comet, he's one that um, likes this track and he could come good. Um... And what's the other one? Yeah, Primo Comet, Dynamo Walt, something lovely. And, you know, the tip is Dynamo Walt. A two-point place win at 6-4. to four. I think that's absolutely cracking bet. Right, 7 o'clock, Amal Fatty win. Or place win. See Shack and Time Reflection. You know, it's up and down this race. It's, it's, well, I think it's the hardest race to judge tonight. This one, um, just do a fun bet. The more fatty C shark diamond, diamond reflection in combo exactness. Seven o'clock thirty. Perfect refuge. Now perfect refuge. Uh, cover bet eleven to four. So we get second or third. You get your stakes return. I do think perfect refuge um, is the one here. Um, I do think Apache Blaze, um, King of Naples, and Manny Feed um, could get the exotics in that race. I haven't wrote it down, but um, I was sort of taken by Apache Blaze, but I don't think he, ca he can beat this perfect refuge. I think King of Naples could possibly get in front of Apache Blaze tonight. And Manny Feed, I mean, he did show something really decent at 40 to 1, and that may not be a fluke, and he could. You know, I don't think he can beat Perfect Refuge, to be honest with you. I think Perfect Refuge is a really decent horse. 
and uh, if he gets a clean go at it tonight, I think he'll win. Right, eight o'clock. El Sheba, who missed the break on debut. Um, I, you never see Don Gosson horses missing breaks. I mean, these horses have been training since uh, before too, in um, pre-season training camps, and to think that they're green and they're missing break and when they're three year olds, it just it doesn't wash with me. Um, I don't know. I think the the jockey was sat in the stalls and he was asleep. To be honest with you, and they caught him out. Um, I don't think there was anything. You know, I think the jockey was just asleep in the stalls. I don't think it was the horse's fault. I mean, you know, unless it's been showing anything, I told him that it wasn't breaking. Wherefore, you know, that's why you've got barrier trials. I mean, half of these trainers, they don't use them. I don't know why. And they, they, the amount of races trainers are losing because they they haven't got their horse barrier trialed. This does all the other countries I know of, right? The horses are ready, basically ready to go from the day one. And these are three-year-olds. It's not like they're two-year-olds. You know, there should be no excuses for missing breaks and slowly away. I mean, that is just something... You know, it's, it's deliberate. It's deliberate to me. Um, look at Mark Johnson and um, Archie Watson. I mean, they're just... If you're not going to train your horse to get away well and just going to mess about, then Archie Watson and Mark Johnson's just going to clean up. Huh? You're not doing your owners any favours whatsoever by this messing about, you know, with horses. Get them out. Get them in the stalls. Get them in the barrier trials. They're three-year-olds. If they don't like the stalls, get them trained up. Get them away first time and get them in this winner's enclosure. They're decent horses. Right. Run over. Right, this Tioro de Vega as well in the 8 o'clock. Quite a decent horse. Um, uh, I don't really know fully about it, but, you know... Um, you know, the trainer's quite guarded with his, so the more guarded, probably better it is. So, um, it is not, it's, it was small, you know, last time I heard about it. It might have grew, so, you know, is there any growth there? That it's obviously, you know, a three. If it has changed shape and grew, so on the track, if you see it and it's like a decent size, this Teoro de Vigo, then I would have a little punt on it because it, is decent right this 830 any smile honey bear any smiles are right it, it really decent horse um michael bell um nice pedigree uh, i think they got a bargain 60 grand um i do like honey bear i've tipped honey bear i think you get away i do love love the uh, animal kingdom the stallion uh, and the dam uh, the dam is bred three winners and you know, the dam was racing at Maidan in very competitive races. Uh, came from Argentina. So I think that's a quite a decent, um, you know, a pedigree there. You know, it's it's a young pedigree, you know, but I think it can, you know, going further on, um, it could be quite decent. And I do um, think the other one there is this um, new approach, um, Roger Varian's new approach, Nabilea. I mean, they do like this one at the yard. Um, very much so, so it's them three. But you know, I wouldn't six to four. I think um somebody's you know they know it's decent, but six to four. Mm, I'd rather be on Honey Bear seven to one, six to one than you know. I mean, I do like New Approach. It's one of my favourite stallions. So you know, I do like New Approach. I think he's going to be one of the leading stallions going forward. You know, it's just he's just below the. You know the likes of the top, the top ones, but um, not by much. And obviously, he's the son of the top class stallions. So um, that's it.